Hey folks, Wuffel here, and today we're going to take a look at the new version of the Resin Tornado and the new tray that I designed. But before we start looking at the finished product, I'll take you over to the other side of this room and we're going to start making one of these. Okay folks, we are actually in the workshop again. And I prepped some stuff here. So we are casting a tower and we are casting a tray bottom. And I already picked out some of my older sprue parts that we will include to recycle them. And I pre-mixed some pigments into my resin part A. Because these are dry pigments, I like to pre-mix them and let this stuff stay for a while and mix again. And this will introduce a lot of tiny bubbles and then I just let it sit for a while and the bubbles will raise on their own. And then I will add the hardener and make the pour themselves. So, and as you can see here, there are some silver dots. Um, this is a neon green that is slightly transparent and I added a little bit of silver pigment. This is actually a mother of pearl pigment, but in tiny amounts, it just leaves a nice silver shimmer. And I took a little bit of that stuff and added it to some of the tiles of the tray. And I hope this will leave some nice silver tiles in the end. So this is just a testing phase. Um, I'm also not sure how good the added parts. I sorted the flat bits out here that I will add for this. I hope this will work. I don't have anything to crunch them down yet, but in the future I hope to fill up this with a lot of scrap pieces and just add a little bit of resin, but for now I hope to at least put in 10% of stuff to help that. So let's get into mixing the resin. And we need a huge amount of that stuff. So this is already 260 grams of part A and we need another 130 grams of the hardener. As always, when mixing stuff up, don't forget to scrape the sides, scrape the bottom to get a good mixture. And if you think it is well mixed up, just give it another round just to be safe. I'm not sure if the camera will catch the silver swirls that you see here. I hope this will be transparent enough at the end. So we clean that up later and I start by filling the big mold. Nothing too fancy here. Just let it flow in because this will go into the pressure pot. I don't worry or bother too much about small bubbles. And I fill it up to nearly the top. And then I start adding some of these bits here. These will not have the exact same color, but they are close. And I really like to see these at the end because the reason we put them in is to recycle them. And I like to see that result in the end. So all the years of collecting that stuff actually pay off now. And now we come to the fun part, filling up the tray. That was the casting. And this will go into the pressure pot and this will stay here. And then we will see us in 24 hours. It's about two days later now. It's Christmas time. So I spend my time with other things, but our parts are solid and cured. So it's time to open them. So I think we will start with this one. And on such a piece, it's quite nice to just slightly peel off from the sides to make sure everything here is released and what you can also see hopefully you can see it when you peel it off you see that white coming off yeah that's these bright areas come from the rough texture 
of the engraving. And then we'll peel that off. Nothing sticks in the mold. And this piece here, wow, this looks pretty cool. It's definitely too bright in here to see that transparent thing here. I will make some pictures and show you that later. But now to the to the fun part. Releasing this one. So now I switch to some gloves because we will need some mold release. In this case, we need it as a lubricant to put out the pieces. So I take that and it has this nice thin needle part here at the start and I, I press against it. So when I push in the material, it will directly creep into the other areas instead of just coming out at the top. And then I slop it around a little bit to spread the silicon spray. So, and what I do now is here is the, the big part this is the outcome of the dice tower. So this is the thickest area. And from here, I push from the back or I drill it that way. And then you can see how this comes loose from the parts. And then I, you see that little bow in here? I hope you can see it. There's an air bubble now. And I push that down. And as you can already see here at the top, this means that the tower's already pushed out a little bit. Now there's some room. So a little bit more of that. And we push further. And then we go slow and steady. And there we have it. Sadly, this kind of um, releasing and demolding, it's a lot of wear and tear to the mold. And in one of the first casts that I made, a little bit of the mold release formed a little, a little drop. And I think it was somewhere around here. And this little drop made the issue that I had a, a hollow um, part here in the casting. And this hollow part left a sharp corner. And by demolding, this part here slid open the whole mold all the way up to here. So what you can see, I think it's better to see in the mold. Hope you can see it a little bit here in the reflection. There are some scars inside the material and that's already since the second cast of this so you definitely need to be careful with this but that's not a big issue you can you now have a little bit of material extra and extra material means you can cut it away so yeah these are demolded now so and finally we are back at the workbench these are now properly cured. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than just the few days that I talked about before. It's actually a few weeks, but that doesn't change the plans to finish these. Um, the first step we do, I like to take a nice file and we need to get rid of the sharp edge here at the bottom. And it's quite simple. I just go at a about a 45 degree angle right here at the corner and break it. So now you can see 
that there's a little bit of that white stuff and we gently remove that by just passing over it ever so slightly nearly flat and remember this doesn't need to be perfect because it's inside the plexiglass tube later but I just want to make sure that while working with this there's nothing you can scratch yourself especially on these parts here so these get a little bit more you can also sand that down on that hard stuff here I like to use the file because it's quick and efficient and the file will stay and last while you know sanding paper gets worn down so just to make sure that all the rougher edges are broken and cut down now you can see I can go over that with my fingers and stuff and I won't hurt myself especially in the next steps so that's good one done now we're doing the same here because this edge it's not very sharp it's not as rough as this side but I definitely want to break it down as well because these are exposed later so you can grab them so I will chamfer this So all the outside corners are now nicely chamfered. Just checking that there's nothing where you can catch. And that is, and you see from, from the top side, I think even in the video, you don't need to polish that up or anything. You won't see that. Um, so that's pretty nice, uh, a nice time saver because it's such a small area, you won't notice it especially when standing on the desk so now we break down these a little bit okay let's quickly check this as well going over this and there are no sharp pointy edges i will definitely work something out for the future for this because it's sticking out it's i don't know it looks pretty weird uh, on one side pretty nice on one side i find it ugly i'm not sure but that's why we are here and testing such things so let me clean up that mess a little bit and then we continue with the second step so that one and that one what you can see here i already prepared some tools that we need so the first step will be we take in the four millimeter drill and we will pre-center the holes that we need to put on the fence here and for that i take one of the fence pieces here you can see it that's coming right off the laser like this i just removed the protection foil and countersunk the holes but for this prototype state i don't have any markings here on the casted part so i will put that in hold it in place and then just simply mark the point where i need to drill later so it doesn't need much i just need to make sure that this is sitting in its final position that was all the pre-drilling on the tower we already have the center marks that we need for later so we can switch the drill bits and move on to 3.3 millimeters because that's the the center hole size for an M4 tap.
And now you just need a steady hand and check that everything is in the right orientation and then you drill from the side. I tried to make it visible for you. I'm not sure how good you can see this. Just checking that we're correct in all directions. And there we have our hole drilled into our piece. Now let's do that with all the rest. And that's from that side. Now we are moving on to a tapping bit. Let's start tapping these holes. And for tapping them, I use alcohol because for just a few holes, it's fine to use alcohol. You just need some lubricant to make, to make it not burn or stuck or something like that. And epoxy is very nice to tap. Especially when it's transparent, you can see uh, inside the material. And blowing it out uh, with the alcohol makes it super easy. There's no oily stuff um, in, the, in the frets now that I need to clean off. I also set the screw control here uh, to a low level, so if something gets stuck, I don't want to, to break it in the material, so you can see it here. It's just uh, stopping to drill. Also always remove the, the old bits that are stuck on the, on the tapping bit. Especially here on on transparent material, it's quite nice because you can you can magically see how the um, thread is coming up, and that is pretty nice. It gives you a lot of control. So tapping transparent materials is is pretty nice and satisfying. So that is tapped. Now six more holes on this end. Okay, so time for the final assembly. We have our cleaned up, tapped and ready to go resin parts. We have the needed bit in our drill. We need some screws. They are also available here. Then we need some plexiglass. The tube, fresh from the laser. And you can see I also tapped these holes. Nothing special here. The holes were already pre-cut in the material with the laser. So I just used the cordless drill here um, with a tapping bit, uh, uh, with a countersunk bit. And then I added the countersunks. And then we have the fence parts that we need on this. I already put up the foil from these ones here so we will use these and we will also start with this one so let's start here in the back Maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. 
always check that the screw and everything is nice and flush. Maybe I accidentally did not countersunk deep enough. And what you can see here, this has a lower profile as this. And you can see here are also the chamfers. So this one here and the one on the opposite side and the one in the back, these are the three points that are the feet of the tray. So the tray will stand on these pieces. So I eliminated the need to have a flat backside of my casting. And there we have our finished tray with all its features, the free feet. And the nice thing about free feet, regardless of the underground, it will never wobble because you always have these three points. There's no room to wobble. Now let's move on to this part here. We just put that in. Double check that everything sits where it needs to sit. Then we just screw that in for a little bit. I don't fix that yet. I first install all the screws and then I tighten them. So there's a little bit of room for it to wiggle because the laser is not overwhelmingly precise, but in this case, everything went in nicely. But especially when you, when you start to tighten the screws, the diameter of these three contacting points might be a little bit smaller than the diameter of the tubing. So it might twist it a little bit and then the holes won't um, align properly. And now I can tighten them. And this is now solidly in there. There's no rocking. This is not moving. Like in the version before with just one screw in the back, there was the opportunity that it can tilt a little bit on the inside. So when I did this with the old version, then the tower here at the top could rack against the inside here. But now that's not the case. And we are removing the paper and our tower is done. And we finally finished our pieces here. So let's have a closer look at them. We start with the tower because that's of course the main part of this project. And for that, I have one of the old ones for comparison. So when you see them side by side on the first side, you won't notice any big changes and there are no big changes to this. I think the height is definitely one of the more obvious things that changed and when you take a closer look at the bottom, the bottom changed. On the first version we have a resin bottom so there's a lip down here that covers the plexiglass tubing and for that reason I always needed to sand down the bottom so the dice tower is standing. With the new version, this is not necessary anymore because it is standing on the feet that I directly cut into the plexiglass tube. And I also included three screws instead of just one screw, making the whole thing a little bit more stable and easier to work with. So the resin part is now floating on the inside, which also is a nice look because there's always a little bit of a shadow underneath the tower. It looks a little bit like it's floating around and especially with something transparent you get some nice coloration here at the bottom. So definitely a yes to everything on this tower. For that point I say the design and everything is set and this would be ready to launch. But we also have our dice tray and the dice tray here is definitely causing some issues. But first and foremost, we check for the good things. First of all, it is doable. So the goal here was to have something that matches the dice tower. So I have resin 
screwed in with some stainless steel screws to a plexiglass part that is laser cut. And so I took these features over and made the tray the same way. The base plate is cast in resin, making the center of the tray. And all the side pieces are laser cut acrylic and they are held in place by these stainless steel screws, which are the exact same as on the tower. So the matchup of the design in general, 100% there. But there are some issues to the shape for the moment. So this is the second try that I made on making a tray in that, uh, uh, in that style. And this was the version ready to be casted. The first version was a little bit thinner and easier. And it looked like that and everything was glued in place. So this was more like I have some leftover plexiglass. Let's test some stuff and I quickly cut that out. And what you can see here are three cutouts that I made to match up with the feet of the tower. So the tower is not going to, to slip on this so it will stay in place which was great but i didn't like the look of the tower sinking in i just wanted to have that floating look so i left these cutouts aside and when you put that tower in here it now can move so i need to find a way to put some constraints in here to hold the tower in place. I already have some ideas. I will definitely move the tower a little bit more in the back. I want to make the fences here a little bit longer so they are directly connecting to the sides of the opening here. And if possible, I try to make something um, that is in the back, securing it and making it easy to grab. So for this, I would like to have the opportunity to just take one hand and grab the whole thing. And at the moment, this means that I'm pressing this little piece right at the back here and my fingers slightly slip underneath the tower here, uh, underneath the tray here so I can pick it up. And that is not the goal. I want to make this work a lot better. Of course, you can pick it up with two hands. I don't want this to, to move around here. So this will be changed. The rest, the general shape, the general design, I think is pretty good. And I like that. Maybe some small changes, making the fences a slightly bit higher. Dice that come out super fast, don't bounce off and jump over that. But talking of dice, let's have a look. And there we had it. So you see, there's definitely some room for improvements here, but overall, uh, it's so satisfying. Everything is in the same style. You have the green dice, the green base, the green tower. I'm very, very happy with that. I also like the feature, let me show you, that you can see your dice even from the sides as the parts are transparent. So. You have your pretty dice and you will always be able to see them as good as possible because there's no border blocking your sight anymore. So that's also a nice side effect that I that I really like on this concept. So that's from this so far. I will go back to the workbench and start laying out some other shapes for the base here. I'm happy that the concept in general worked. All the pieces are castable, they are not too complicated and I want to keep that as a good point here. And we just now fix these small mechanical issues and we are ready to go with the second version. So, and that's it from this project so far. I will now try to get some fixes for these mechanical issues and I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know what do you like about this, what you don't like, especially the stuff that you don't like, because then it's something that I might have missed and that I need to improve on. And if you have any ideas what could be better on this, I'm always open for suggestions. So please leave me some comments down below and share this with your friends. And I hope to see you on the next one. Until that, happy dice making, happy crafting, happy gaming, and we will see us soon. Bye.